I'm in a different room today. Yay! For those of you who don't know, I normally make videos in a study lounge that's in the dorm I stay at. But the one that's on my floor has people in it, so I'm not there and I'm here. And here, the lighting is kind of weird and like green. And it's like that on every floor except the one I'm at. I don't know. Maybe it's just like a sign that I'm supposed to do this forever and ever and it makes it easier and then life is awesome. That's my theory anyway, but I don't know why it is. But I'm not really here to talk about that. I'm just explaining why the light looks funky and why it looks like I'm in a back alleyway of like New Vegas. New Vegas. I'm trying to say like New York or Las Vegas, but none of the, I don't know. Los Angeles? I don't know what I was trying to say, but I was just talking. And I don't know. I, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And I'm trying to think of something to talk about. I have no topic. I'm just winging it today. I don't know. I don't know. Um, hmm. It's interesting how people... I don't know what I want to talk about. It's interesting. Like, I have a million things I could, but I don't know how to start. I'll start with Facebook. Facebook is really, really weird. Facebook is like... It's weird because the idea of Facebook, the reason why I joined it is when you leave someone and you aren't around them anymore or for whatever reason you are in regular contact with them, it gives you a direct connection to them. And it's so much more convenient than calling and taking 15 minutes out of your day to talk to them. It's just like a quick and easy fun way to keep in touch with them. But it's interesting how it's not that for two reasons. One, it's not personal one-on-one. -on -one. Facebook is like you're showing the world your life. And two, it's not a realistic interpretation of your life. It's just what you put out there and you want people to think you are. So you see a lot of, not phoniness, but putting yourself in the best light possible. So I feel like there's a lot of phoniness that's on Facebook. Uh, part of that is how many pictures you post. That's something I've noticed. The some Certain people try and paint the image that they have a busy social life. And other people joke about how they're forever alone and they never do anything. And people who say, oh, I never do anything, they have maybe like 20, 30, 40, 50 pictures on their Facebook. And people who talk about doing stuff, they have like 2,000 pictures on their Facebook. But I don't think that it's really necessary because it's like, why take a picture and then put it on Facebook? Unless if it's your, you're changing your profile picture, I don't see the point of it. Or if it's like your senior pictures in high school or something. But the majority of the time, like I, I met someone and I added them on Facebook and they have like 4,000 pictures. I'm like, why do they have so many pictures? So I look at their pictures and the majority of them are just them in one place, maybe with a friend or two, just hanging out in their apartment or something. And they take like 100 pictures, just doing wacky faces. Like one's like, ah, ah. Then another one, one's like, like, ah, and they're like, ah, and then there are ones where they do funky effects, like this one, like he, like, there's one picture of this guy who's smiling, like, ah, and then, like, the next picture was Photoshop to make it more round, ah, and, like, little birds from Twitter were flying in his mouth, and it's like, why do that? Why do that? Why make so many pictures? I feel like it's just inflating your picture count. It's so weird. People on Facebook just have that image, and you have to look like you're doing something. Why do you have to look like you're doing something? The majority of people just don't do stuff, and when you do, it's only like a fair amount of the time. The rest of the time, you're not doing anything. The majority of your time isn't worth anything. It's like when I spend a few hours on YouTube or messing around on Facebook or something, and someone tells me, you're wasting your time, you need to do something special. It's like, why do that? What, what is so special that I can be doing with my time right now? I mean, I'm in college, I can study for a test or something, but that's not really gonna benefit me. Besides, I'm not gonna spend all day doing that. Why do I have, like, what is the value of every hour in my life? What's the value of every day in my life? It's so funny, like, I made a video on my other channel, Stuff is Carrots, which I'll link down below. Uh, like, I always do, I always link it down below. But I made a video, and I talked about how I, feel like today is one of those days, one of the many days I have where I do nothing productive and nothing comes out of it and it's just a waste, but I don't really mind. And that's just the way it goes. There are a lot of days where I don't really do anything and there's no point to it, but I don't really mind that. And why is that such a bad thing? I don't even know where I'm going with that. I just want to mention my channel because every time I mention it on here, I get like five to ten subscribers on it. And according to social media, I've gotten like four new subscribers in the past month on that channel. And nobody ever sees it, even though it's always there in the video description. So uh, click on it, I guess, if you want. But I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's like I'm trying to sound smart, but am I smart? I don't know. Today I got a comment on one of my videos and someone said that, because like in a video, 
a few weeks ago, I said, why do you watch me? And he finally responded to that. He's like, I finally have an image why. He said, I'm so smart and kind and intelligent and thoughtful and stuff like that. And I, it's so weird. Like, I don't feel like I'm special anything. I just feel like I'm doing what everybody should be doing to a certain degree. There are all obviously things I don't do and things I think I should do that I don't. But overall, I think that the way my mind works, what I do with my mind, is what people should try and do with their existence. So, yeah, it's like, I don't feel like I'm special. I just feel like I'm doing what people should, you know? I just feel like I'm par for the course. But nobody else does that. It's like setting a curb. I'm in a class where almost half the people have a failing grade, but they're not really failing because there's a curve system in the class. And if you're above the curve, if you're above the average, then you probably have like an A. And if you're below and you have like a 30%, you probably have like a C. And that's the way it is. Maybe there's nothing special about me in particular or special about you, but you're just above the course above the par. You're, par. you're above par for the course. That makes you better. And that increases your value. And that makes you better. Like, maybe that makes me a better person. But does that really justify me calling myself better? Because I'm not really better. I'm not really special. I'm not, like, as good as I want to be, but I'm good enough. I'm good enough. I'm better than the other people. So that gives me value. But maybe I don't want that. Maybe I don't want to just say that I'm good enough. Like, in the class, I can have a D in the class, but I might end up with an A because it's the big curve. But that doesn't mean that I understand everything in the class. That doesn't mean that I've learned anything. It just means that I'm less stupid than the other people. But being less stupid still implies that you're stupid. And being less douchey than everyone else still implies that you're douchey. And I can be kind of douchey, I feel. I can be kind of ignoring to people. And I don't know why that is. I don't feel like I'm really ignoring the people. I don't feel like I really ignore them. I don't feel like I don't really not talk to them. Or at least I don't try, but time is such a weird thing for me, you know? It's like, I can say, I, I can talk to someone and say, hey, I'll see you later. And then I communicate with them on Facebook or something a week later. I say, hey, what's up? And like, hey, what happened to you? What do you mean? You dropped, you like dropped off the face of the earth. Where are you? It's like people expect you to have such regular contact with them. If I don't talk with someone for a week, they've pretty much forgotten I exist. And I don't know why that is. I, I, I don't know. It's so weird. In my mind, I don't need that much social interaction. I don't need nearly that much social interaction. It, it's, it's like if I hang out with someone once a week or I meet up with them and I have a nice talk with them or something once a week, that's enough to sustain a friendship for me if I at least know what's going on in your life. But a lot of people need a lot more than that, and I don't know why. Sometimes it's more for me to take. It, it's more than I can take. And it's like, just blows my mind that there's so much that you have to put into the relationship. And I can understand that if you have like two or three close friends, but it seems like so many people I know know like 50 people and they keep in regular contact with them. And I'm like, do they ever have any privacy time at all? I like privacy time, but maybe I've just become indulgent in it. Maybe I just am alone way too much. Maybe I'm alone too much and I've just become addicted to being alone in certain situations. I don't know why. I just feel like to my, in my mind, there's a certain value on isolation. And I like to be alone the majority of the day. Whether it's reading or studying or doing homework or watching YouTube videos or reading stuff on Facebook or stuff, I like being alone a lot. And I don't know why, but I just do. I do, and that's me. So, I don't know. That sort of separates me from people, and it's really weird, but I don't take that as a weird thing. I don't take it as me hiding away from them. That's just my natural state. And I'm, like, separate from them. And not only that, but I just feel like I can't relate to people in a lot of ways. Like, so many people just... Like, conversation seems to flow so freely in their minds, and I just don't fit in. But the funny thing is, I don't fit in, I don't know how to do this stuff, but I can rate it when I see it. Like, I don't, I don't know exactly what I mean. What I mean is, like, if I see someone doing something stupid, I can tell that it's stupid, and I can tell that it's making people awkward, but I don't, if I'm doing that, I can't tell whether it's awkward or acceptable or not. Like, the other day, I was with a friend and my friend's friend, and we were talking and joking, and it was all great, and I thought things were going great. And then I talked with my friend and asked him about the friend's friend, and apparently he got really pissed off at me, because I made a few jokes that he didn't like. Like, I made one about his beard, and I said his beard sort of looked like a redneck beard or something like that, and I was joking, obviously. But he took that really seriously, and he got upset at me. And I don't know if he's ever going to want to talk to me again. Maybe it's like, oh, this guy's an asshole, but I'm in the social situation, so I don't want to disrupt it. I don't want to rock the boat. And he didn't like that. And I'm, I don't know. But if I see someone do something stupid, I can evaluate their perception to that and analyze that. I don't know why. I don't know why. 
I don't know why I can tell when other people are screwing up, but I can't tell when I'm screwing up myself. Another example is I know someone who wants to get a girlfriend. He's never had a girlfriend, and he's so desperate. He also writes music, and he said he's retiring from writing music until he gets a girlfriend and gets whatever he wants. I don't know if it's sex or not, or if he just wants the social status, or he wants someone to hug and cuddle and stuff, but he wants someone for whatever reason. And... I've told him that he's going about it the wrong way, especially since he normally likes to go with people he already knows. He likes to have it a thing where your friendship develops and evolves into something else. And he's Facebook friends with most of these people, but he posts about how desperate he is to get a girl. And that is not a good thing to do. Like, honestly, if you're posting about how much everything sucks for you, people want to get in a relationship with someone who's stable mentally and emotionally. They, they don't want to get in someone who feels like they're desperate because that can develop codependence and it can make them feel uncomfortable. And if you're telling people that you don't feel happy, but you want them to perceive you as you are, then that's not going to be good. They're not going to think that way. But I pretty much do the same thing. I don't talk about girls. I don't talk about being in a relationship or being forever alone. But I don't know. I can see that's wrong. And I can... It's funny. Like, I know what not to do when trying to be in a relationship or something, but I don't know what to do. If you want to know my credentials and my history with dating, just refer to my username. It's up there, I think. But, yeah... I don't know. I don't know. It's so weird. Like, I can talk to people and just bullshit about them with anything, but I'm never good at it. Like, one time I was trying to talk to someone, and the topic went to cheese. Cheese. I don't know why. I, I, I don't even like cheese, but I started talking about cheese. Cheese. Fucking cheese. I started talking about cheese, and I don't know why. I never think about cheese. I've never thought about cheese before that. I haven't thought about it since, but something in my mind compelled me to start talking about cheese. And I talked about cheese with this person, and they thought it was really, really weird. And I thought it was really, really weird, but I had to roll with it, because I didn't want to just ignore it, because that's like acknowledging that it's stupid. And even that doesn't make any sense to me. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Life is just so complicated, though. I don't know what to think of anything. I really don't. Don't. And also, it's like people just, I don't know. It's like if I try and talk to someone, they often act like you're just creepy. I don't know if it's the way I present myself, but it feels like if you talk to anyone for any, like any person of the opposite sex, they're assuming that it's like a marriage proposal. I don't know why. Maybe if I'm interested in someone, I just want to start off as friends first. Or maybe I just want a friend sometimes. Maybe I just feel lonely and I want to meet someone new. But everybody assumes that you're trying to get on to them. And why can't that be? Why can't you just be friendly? I don't know. Like, why can't you just be friendly with someone? Like, if I compliment someone, like, if I have a friend who's a girl and I compliment her on her top or her hair or something, they're like, oh, uh, thanks? And they sort of just keep their distance away from me, and I don't know why. Maybe they think that I'm trying to get on to them. Maybe it's because they know that I'm a forever alone or loser, and I don't and they think that I'm just like, I gotta do it, and I gotta break out the friend zone. And by the way, isn't that stupid, the term the friend zone? Because the friend zone implies that you are trying to get in with them. In my mind, the friend zone is like you're hitting on a girl, and she's responding, but eventually she's like, oh, well, I already have a boyfriend, or oh, I don't like you, like she's a strip tease, or a prude, that's the word that people use, a prude. But in my mind, the majority of people who claim that they're friend zoned are, have actually put themselves in the position of being just a friend to them. Like, first impressions are everything, and it's hard to break out of first impressions. If you present yourself as just a friendly guy who wants to be their friend, for the majority of cases, people are going to just assume that that's what you want. And if you expect it to naturally evolve from there, it's just not. Not to mention that in our society, the majority of people expect the men to act on the female. Like, on Reddit, there is this mentality of being friend-zoned. There's also a lot of borderline misogyny, I'd say. Like, a lot of people who, a lot of men who view women negatively. Like, OMG, she's such a bitch. And stuff like that. And I don't know, like, the majority of people talk about oh, how they got friend-zoned and stuff like that. But, I just... Oh, I forgot to mention something. The majority of them said that they would love it if a girl asked them out. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind that either, because I'm a cowardice piece of shit, and I would love it if a girl approached me. I mean, uh, even if it was someone I wasn't interested in, and I said no, I would just appreciate the thought, and appreciate, it, it would be validating, but the fact is people just don't work like that. Being idealistic and saying, the man doesn't have to ask the woman out, the woman can ask the man out. Yes, of course she can, if that happens, that's great, but expecting to happen isn't doing anything, you have to be pragmatic about the situation. If she's saying that she 
the majority of the time, if you're a guy and there's a girl you like and she likes you back, it's expected that you go to her. And if you don't go to her, nothing's going to happen. And it doesn't matter the ideals behind it, saying, oh, it shouldn't be that way. It doesn't matter whether it should or not. The fact is, if you don't talk to her, nothing's ever going to happen. And you being friendly and just doing favors and implying things without actually saying them is just expecting her to break the cultural norm but people don't break cultural norms if you want to be that brave pioneer who totally changes everything I applaud you and good luck with that but odds are it's not gonna work out in your favor it's just not things often don't just magically work for you I don't know it's like I don't know so many things it the funny thing is even though I know that I still have that same mentality though too I have the mentality that I've been friend zoned or that things don't seem right. It's like a dichotomy or cognitive dissonance or something. It's like how I hate cherry pie. I hate cherry pie, but I love the idea of cherry pie. Maybe that's because I've eaten dum dum suckers that are like cherry flavored and they're always my favorite flavor of candy, like Jolly Ranchers. Cherry flavored Jolly Ranchers are amazing, but I hate actual cherries and I hate cherry pie. Like, I hate cherry pie, but not really, you know? It's so weird and I don't know what to do with myself. It's like I'm trying to sound like I'm intelligent and I know the answers and ideally I do, but the fact is idealism doesn't matter. What matters is pragmatism and I don't have any pragmatism. I can understand what I need to do and what doesn't work in society and in life, but I can't do it myself. And it's so weird. It's just so weird and I don't know. It's like I can see people who talk about politics and I'm like, oh, they're stupid because of this and they're stupid because of that. But I just, I, I'm afraid that if I talk about politics, I'm going to look the same way. Because the fact is, I don't really consider myself that much more intelligent than other people. I see people doing stupid things when they talk about politics or whatever. When I talk about politics, I always feel like I'm oversimplifying things and people view me as stupid as well. That's why I hate talking about politics, because it's people talking like they're smarter than they actually are. And that frustrates me when someone is not intelligent when they're acting like they are, and they're expecting more credibility. Especially if it's something that you've already talked about a million, million, bajillion times. And it's not something that you feel like is worth your time and attention in that manner. I, I just don't know. It's so weird. And life is so weird. But, oh man, my throat is dry. I can't talk for more than 20 minutes at a time. And I don't know why. But it's like, I don't know, like a limitation. Maybe it's just in my mind. Maybe it's all placebo. I don't know. But... And that's so weird, the idea of placebo. For those of you who don't know, placebo means that you think something is working, so your mind acts as though it is, when it really isn't. Like, an example is there's this famous case, or I think it was famous, I don't know, where, like, a bunch of people got knee, like, reinstallment something, like knee surgery, because they're old, and they were divided into three groups. Two groups actually got the surgery. One group, they just cut their knee open, but they didn't do anything. And they told them all that they would be fine now, and all three groups acted like they were fine even though the one group didn't get the treatment when the other two did. And they just felt fine. And then when they confronted them and talked to them about it, they're like, oh no, nothing happened, I'm fine. And then when they explained that they actually didn't get the surgery, they're like, wait, are you serious? Are you sure? Like, really? And that asks, that asks a particular question for me, though. Because in science, if you're testing on someone, you always have to have consent. You can't do something against their will. And or without them really knowing what they're getting into or else you get another Stanford prison experiment where everything is just fucked up. But how effective are placebos? Because the mind is everything. If you believe that something's going to work, it's going to. It reminds me of an episode of House where this one guy thought he was going to die when he was 40 because his dad and his grandpa and his great-grandpa did. And Dr. House couldn't find anything wrong with him and he assumed there was nothing wrong with him so he gave him these like sugar pills and said that they were some miracle drug that was going to fix him. And he just assumed it was going to work. Is it ethical to lie like that? Plus, what if the person actually does have some cause and it's not going to fix it? Like, in that show, in that episode, there actually was something wrong with him and he had to get a surgery done at the end. So, how do you know when it's okay to do something? How do you know when you're justified in doing something? And that's such a complicated situation because you have to know what you can do and what you can't do. Because if you try and do something that you can't, then one of two things will happen. Either One of three things will happen. Either A, you're having un negative consequences on the world, that you didn't intend. B, people will perceive you as being bad and they'll stop associating with you. Or C, you'll just feel like a douchebag because you did something wrong and it wasn't what you wanted to accomplish, even though the last one doesn't happen a lot. People don't evaluate what they do and see it as bad very often. And I feel like pretty much everybody 
does some bad things, and nobody really admits it. But then what's the point of admitting it? What's the point of hearing people admit something? Maybe you just have to admit it to yourself. Like, why do we have an obsession with people admitting that they're wrong? Like, if you're arguing with someone, you want to hear them say, oh, I'm wrong, I'm sorry. What do you gain from that? <clears throat> what do you gain from that? What do you gain from someone saying that they were wrong and you were right? It's like we expect society to treat us like we as individuals. Each person is so important. It's like when anybody does something stupid, we expect them to apologize to society. I'm trying to think of an example. I'm trying to think of an example, but I can't think of an example. I don't know why I can't think of an example. Uh, there are examples, but they are not in my mind. They are in other places, like in my lower esophagus. Uh, the examples are in my lower esophagus, and I don't even know what that is. That's not the thing that you don't need and gets cut out, right? No, that's the appendix. See, I know nothing about biology, and that's so funny. It's so funny how I don't know anything. It's also funny how I can talk and not have any real purpose. It's like going back to the whole dating thing that I don't understand. Is like, uh, one big thing that I learned here is that you have to be interesting and unique in some certain way. And the way you do that is making the other person feel interesting and unique. Because you're giving something to them and they perceive you as the person who causes that. And, like, I read a post on the seduction part of Reddit. Reddit.com slash r slash seduction. It was talking about how to pick up girls. I don't really read that, but I look at it once in a while just for interesting. And it was talking about how to make conversation with people. And it said to go beyond the mundane and analyze the real truths behind it. For example, um... You don't just ask what your job is, ask what your goals and passions are. An example the person gave is, I like to ski, but I wouldn't say I like to ski. I would also say it puts me in the zone and it makes me feel like I'm energized. And from there you would ask the girl what makes her feel like that. Her feel like that. Ask her what makes her feel like that. And the thing is, I don't feel like I have anything that does that for me. I used to run, but my knees and my back and my shins and nothing worked. Nothing worked. So I gave up. And now I can't. I used to be able to run like seven, eight, maybe nine miles on a good day. And now I can't run two. So I can't do that anymore. But it did put me in the zone. I can read, but I just don't read ever. I don't know why. I really should, but... I feel like I have nothing. I feel like I have nothing that really is substantial and really just gives me passion that I can explain to someone. I can just rant about nothing, but I don't know. That doesn't do anything for me. That doesn't add any value. And it's not interesting to other people. It's not something that they can latch their teeth into and go off on a tangent, unless if they're also like me and they're also like a forever loner person who doesn't know anything or doesn't do anything, but they're always doing things, but they're not things that leave a substantial impact on their lives. But maybe everybody's like that to some degree, but maybe not really, because I know people who are sort of like that, but they were, say, on their football team in high school, and they have memories from that. I don't really have anything like that. I really don't have much that just gives me such a passion. My throat is killing me, and it's not happy. By the way, my throat is sore. If I rub, rub it like this, it helps, but when I do that, it makes my voice more likely to crack. Like, ah, uh, I don't know why that is. I think it's my voice giving out. I feel like I need to back it up more with my abs. That's the thing about opera singers, how they're very strong with their voices. Apparently they're all really fat, but underneath the fat they have like a six pack of muscles. And I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I hear. And they're very sustained. And maybe that would prevent my voice from getting sore and scratchy so much, so quickly from me talking. I don't know, but I just like to talk, even if it's about nothing. Like, I'm talking now, and... I don't really have to have a purpose, because people are going to listen to this all the way through, even if it's one or two people. Yeah, YouTube. The thing about YouTube is, uh, some people talk about losing motivation for YouTube, and I'm not losing motivation for YouTube. I'm still making videos. I'm just losing motivation to make it good. Like, lately, I just, like, oh, it's 6 o'clock, and I normally upload at 7. So I run in, I talk about any topic, or maybe before, and I look up a, an article really quick, and then I find something to make a video on about that, and then I just throw it up. And half the time, I'm not even responding to comments anymore. I, I'm also losing motivation to even monetize the videos because I want to become a YouTube partner pretty much since I started. But now I am. I don't see the point because, first off, there was a point where I was getting over 200 views from subscriber modules. That means people are subscribed to my channel and they click on it when it pops up in their subscriber feed. Now that's maybe like 30 or 40 people. And I'm getting like 
100 to 150 views per video. And that's not motivation for me to stop making videos. There's still people listening to me, and that's cool. But I'm asking what the point is of monetizing videos. I'm not even putting up the advertisement commercials for the first day or so on the video. I just put up the little square ones that appear on the side. But I don't uh, activate the commercial ones until later because it's like you make so much less money with those, but you're you're not making any money anyway because you're getting like 100 views per video. And it's stupid. I don't even see the point of being a YouTube partner. You get thumbnails, but anybody gets them now. That's just stupid. And then you get a channel banner, which I don't even use. It's pointless. I don't even think half the things that I have linked on my banner work. Like I have a link to YT Talk and to my second channel. I don't th even think they do anything. I don't know. It's just a waste. And it's like me trying to look all professional. And there are so many people who like, I've gotten in the past month, like messages from three or four people asking me if I want to subscribe to them and do box for box and watch their videos because they're so cool. And they're all just like stupid Call of Duty montages that I don't give a shit about. But they're all YouTube partners and they have these fancy banners on the top of their channel. And they're like really well made. They probably went to some professional website and paid them a decent amount of money in order to make it look really nice. But they have like tens like 50 or 100 subscribers and a few thousand views. I think the majority of these people come from Social Blade because on Social Blade now you can get a partnership if you get like 50 views a day and that's like nothing at all. I get more than that just from videos I upload but the majority of my views come from old videos that I've uploaded that just happen to do well. I have like maybe five or six videos that account for the majority of my views that I get but <clears throat> I don't know. What's the point of monetizing or, or maybe one of your videos will just randomly go viral. You never know. Like, I could upload a video tomorrow and it will get 500,000 views. And if I monetized it, I get money for all that. But just as it stands, if I get a video with 100 views on it, I don't really care about the money because I'm making basically none of it. So, yeah. It's like I'm not saying that the money isn't worth it. I'm just saying the money isn't worth it if there is no money to be worth it for. So yeah, that's a thing. It makes me ask why I bothered partnering in the first place. By the way, I'm with TGN, and the big thing about TGN for me was, well, most networks said that you could, that you had to lock in for a while, like six months or a year that you can't quit. TGN said you can quit any time as long as you give them a 30-day notice. Well, that's changing in 2013. Presumably the world doesn't blow up like the Aztecs promoted, but uh, yeah. But they're changing that, and you're going to have to stay with them a year. And that's, ex that's a big reason why I'm afraid. But I don't have the motivation to leave. I don't know why. I think it's because once you let something in, you're more motivated to just let it be. I don't know. That's my thoughts. It's like <clears throat> if something seems like a small uh, contribution, but then you find out there's more that you can do, you're like, oh, I already added to that. I might as well do more. It's like when you sign a petition. So many people, like I signed one petition a long ways back about SOPA and PIPA and stuff and I still get offers from people to sign more petitions and even donate money to stuff and that's why I hate signing petitions or contributing to causes on Indiegogo or Kickstarter or stuff because you always get more shit about stuff that you can contribute to. Why can't I just help something and then that be done? Why can't I just be a good person for two seconds and then be lazy, apathetic person just like all the billions of other people on the planet for the rest of my life? I don't know, but that's, it's like, it's so hard to help people. I feel like people would be more motivated to help people if it was just a tiny contribution and then other people could fulfill that contribution. But since you do one thing and then people expect you to do 20 more things after that and everybody knows that's the way it works, you're less motivated to do it. But maybe if we stop that and more people wanted to do stuff, then everybody could just do a little part and then everything is going to be great. But that's not going to happen because we already have the system and nobody likes to rock the boat. Rocking the boat is hard. Now, I don't even know what I'm talking about rocking the boat, but that's just the reality of the situation. And I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. I, this has gone way longer than I wanted it to, but I'm almost at 30 minutes and I kind of want to keep rolling till that. By the way, I'm kind of considering just doing this once a week or so, on Sunday, I guess, because nobody watches videos on Sunday. <clears throat> yeah, so the people who do, I guess, really, 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 really like me. So I might as well make a nice long video for them so they can hate me even more. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know why my voice keeps doing that. By the way, my voice, when it's really cracks like that, and my voice is already kind of nasally, because that's just the local accent, I guess. But when it does it, it sort of reminds me of... Um, What's the group? What's the group? I want to say the BJs, but I know that's not them. The blowjobs. Um, that group, like, uh...
that song and them I don't know who they are the BJ's I want to say they're the BJ's but they're not the BJ's I don't know who they are though I don't know but whatever I want to talk I'm gonna keep going it's almost at 30 minutes and I'm just ranting like crazy I don't know I don't even know if I'm gonna upload this should I upload this and if I do upload this and you actually watch this should I make more long videos like this or do you hate this I don't know I mean, normally my videos are like five, six, seven, eight minutes long, and that's even long from my perception. I view that as being too long, probably, but I don't know. And I'm just sort of talking about stuff because I have a million things on my mind, and I don't feel like organizing each into its nice little topic. I just feel like venting, and I just throw this up. Or I could just delete this video, and I still get the same amount out of it because I still vented my heart out. So, yeah, I don't know what to think. And I'm over 30 minutes now. It's too long, and there's a train coming. Hi, train. Uh, the, vi the window isn't open, so it's probably not as clear, but I can still hear it coming through. I don't know if you can hear that on the camera, though. Did you hear that? If not, then screw it. But, yeah, there's a train that goes through, and I don't know. It's interesting. That train always sort of settles me, though. It makes me feel like the world is busy and doing stuff, like people are on the train going to work, even though it's at night. And by the way, it's so dark out lately. It's like 7 p.m. and it's been pitch black since it's like 5 30 or 6 and I don't know why it's because we rolled back the clocks but even then if it's like it's 7 now if it was 8 now well I, I guess that's reasonable but I don't know I don't know it's just it's weird I like it being late and I like walking outside when it's late but I don't like the pitch dark and I don't like when it's freezing cold when it's pitch dark so I don't know that's just my opinion on life and my opinion matters. My opinion matters. It really does. My opinion actually matters, even though there's seven billion people out there in the world trying to fit in. Keep it together. I was I, I was going to quote the Justin Bieber song, but I don't know the words, because I don't listen to Justin Bieber. I don't know. I don't fucking know. I don't care about Justin Bieber. Everybody hates Justin Bieber, though. And it's this amazing thing when I'm talking to people and someone randomly asks me what my opinion of Justin Bieber is. I always say, I don't like his music, but I don't care about him as a person. I don't hate him. And everybody's like, OMG, me too. Even though they weren't talking about that. They were talking about how they either love him or hate him. Why is it that people feel more open to accepting a moderate position when they find out that someone has it. Because when you're in the moderate, you're just in the middle. But if you're on this end or that end, yeah, you feel like it's more split up. And if you're the moderate in the middle, you're nobody's on your side. And you gotta be on someone's side so you're not alone forever. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. I don't know if I make any sense. But I'm just gonna stop because my throat is sore and I gotta do stuff and I gotta upload this video. And it's gonna take forever because it's 32 minutes now, but... Uh, yeah. Happy times. I kind of don't want to stop, though, because I'm, sort of I'm still talking. When I stop talking, I'm going to be alone. And it's not even that I'm alone, because when I'm with people, I'm, I feel even less comfortable. But it's the fact that I feel like I'm not alone, but I'm with someone who I can just do whatever I want. Because I can just talk, and there's no one to perceive me oddly. And even if they do, and they write a comment about how I suck, I don't have to be there in person. So it's cool, you know? I feel like I'm insane sometimes. I don't know. I feel like I'm insane. So, yeah. I'm insane. Cool. Good talk. I'm insane. That's, that's not how I want to end it. It sounds contrived. What do I want to talk about? Is there any pressing issues? I don't know. I don't know. Like a week ago, the Tigers, because I'm from Michigan, and they were like in the American League or whatever you call it, the end thing. And they always suck, but they made it there and they lost. And everybody's like, oh, go figure. And I don't know why people care about sports too much. I, it, it's all right to watch, I guess. But when a team loses so much, do you really expect anything different from them? Do you really? I don't know. Like, people are like, oh, I thought the Tigers were going to win. They don't win. Ever. Like, why does that matter to you? Why don't you just move on to something else? And... I don't even know. I don't know anything about sports. I'm not qualified to talk about this. And I feel like shit right now, to be honest, because I've just been talking for so long. I'm exhausted, like, in every way, mentally, physically, emotionally, and now conceptually for videos. Because I've ranted out every topic that I could have made a week's worth of videos about. They'd be pretty bad videos, because they weren't very well-fleshed-out ideas. But I'm done talking now, and this is it. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm done. Goodbye. I love you. And by, be sure to subscribe to my channel, Stuff is Carrots. It's down there. And like my Facebook and follow my Twitter, even though I never do anything. Someone told me I need to start putting more funny stuff. So on Twitter, I've started responding to people, even though I don't know how to receive messages from Twitter. There's no, like, inbox system, so I don't know. And on Facebook, I put up a meme picture, and I got, like, five likes. But I guess the idea is to put up a picture and get it shared.
because then it's on other people's pages and they might like it and then they see your videos. Even though I check the anal analytics of my videos and only like two or three views per video comes from Facebook and none of them come from Twitter. So I don't know. But I'm done. I'm done. Do all that stuff. Facebook, Twitter, st Stuff is Carrots channel. And what else do I have? I have YG Talk, the forum that I'm on. So go on the forum. It's a forum about YouTube and talk. And it'll be cool. And tell them that I sent you and that I love you. And that it's in my appendix. The magic is in my appendix. And that's cool. I don't even know what that was. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so sleep deprived. I've gone to bed past 4 a.m. the past two days. Friday night and Saturday night. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm crazy. So I'm going to just stop talking. Goodbye.